I guess now's a good time to test out the Red Wolf camera harness and do a refresh video on installing a backup camera on the OEM radio. I picked up this camera because it has dynamic trajectory parking lines. Hopefully it'll work. Spoiler alert, it ended up being too big to fit the spot that I have my camera in now, but more about that towards the end of the video. The first thing we want to do is remove the bezel starting from the bottom. I've actually been waiting for it to get warm enough so I can do this after a wire got pulled out from the harness I got from the camera source. I could try to fix it again, but this gives me an opportunity to show you an alternate harness you can use. Now we just need to unplug this, and then we can take the bezel off. The head unit is secured with four 10mm bolts. You'll need a socket extension to get them out. Here's my old harness, which is damaged. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug the new one in place and then wire up everything to make sure the camera works. I have the video extension cable plugged in between the harness and the camera. The extension power wire, which is yellow in this case, is connected to the red wire on the camera harness and it's going to be the same setup on the other end with the yellow wire connected to the red power wire going to the camera. You may have noticed that I don't have the black ground wires on either end hooked up. This wiring method works on 2014 to 2016 TC since there's an OEM camera connection on the radio and the reverse trigger wire is already connected from the factory. I'll have more info for earlier TC owners in the video description below. I can just reuse my existing extension cable and can save this one for later. I'll put a link in the description below to the video where I originally ran this cable. The two power wires are twisted together and secured with electrical tape and a zip tie. I put some electrical tape around the exposed, unused video connector and zip tied the excess cables together. Now to put the head unit back in place and then go around back and swap out the camera. I already have all the trim off. I'll put a link in the description below to my trim removal guide. Now to disconnect the camera from here and then pop out the rear hatch garnish. You can see I've moved my camera since the original video. It used to be way off centered over here because the original camera source camera required such a large mounting hole. The Park Vision camera I replaced it with later required a smaller hole, so I was able to fit it into this spot instead. Remove the 10mm nut here, the two here, and unplug this harness, and then this last nut here. Then we can come around to the other side and then pull the garnish free. You want to grab it from the bottom towards the sides and then pull it out. It's a little bit easier with two hands. I have the camera unplugged and pulled out from where I ran it into this hole. I removed the clip from here so that I could run the wire through that opening. You can see here the large hole from the original camera I had to patch. I think I did a pretty good job on the paint job. The current camera looks much better where it's at, but keep in mind that the space for the nut and washer on back is going to be very tight. So the new camera is a lot larger than my existing Park Vision one and it won't fit, so I'll have to reinstall the old one. Fortunately, it still works perfectly after more than four years. If you look at how the new camera's rubber spacer sits, you can see how it won't work in this location. It would have to be installed in the original spot that I already patched up. Before I forget, a quick reminder to plug this back in if you need to close the hatch. Otherwise, you'll need to crawl in from the back seat to access the manual release lever. This mounting spot is about 31mm deep, so you'll want to stick with a 1 inch or 25.4mm camera. I have my old camera reinstalled and the excess cable zip tied. I've secured the rest of the extension cable to the factory wires to prevent it from getting damaged or from rattling around. Per my other camera video, WD-40 will be your friend when pushing the cable through the rubber connector here. Again, I'll have a link to the hatch trim guide below. Adding a backup camera to the 2.5 TC is relatively easy, but be sure to check the video description below for any additional information as well as the reference links to my supporting video guides. If you haven't hit subscribe to my channel yet, please do so now, and as always, thank you for watching.